Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I'm going to try something new today. I'm going to vlog my day since now I have this fancy schmancy car mount. I'm going to see what it's like to vlog. Um, the power went out at my house last night around 2.30 a.m. because for some strange reason we decided to have tornado gale force winds. I'm, I'm exaggerating. Uh, but we decided to have like 50, 60 mile an hour winds last night. Um, all of a sudden at like 9 p.m. getting these like high forceful winds, like, you know, it almost took out my fence. Uh, some of my trees, the branches are broken. I have all kinds of leaves and stuff in my yard. Like it's a hot ass mess. And then on top of that, like my power was out. So like I said, I have a few errands to run today. Uh, the power is back on at my house. It came on about maybe 6.30 this morning. Uh, so the power came back on like while I fell back to sleep, when I finally fell back to sleep. So I just, you know, reset all the clocks and things like that when I woke up. So we're good to go there. But Man, just, you know, having the power be out for like four hours, like in the middle of the night. When, normally when you're sleeping, it doesn't bother you, so you don't care. But since I was wide awake, because I was jilted awake, I'm a really light sleeper. Like, I pretty much was just hoping that my phone didn't die while I was watching Netflix and Hulu on my cell phone to keep myself entertained since I was still awake. By the way, uh, I started watching Bling Empire on Netflix last night because I didn't have anything else to do and I'm kind of here for it like I've watched I think three episodes so I love um, I think it's Kevin who's like the I guess you could say the not rich person in the group I love him because he just like is super regular and is like how did I end up being friends with all of these like super rich ass people and he's super down to earth and sweet um Christine bothers me she's definitely one of those like nouveau riche people who like she has to let people know how rich she is like all the time and it's really annoying it's like we're all rich like that's basically the point of the show is that we're all like crazy rich Asians so you don't need to tell us that you're rich because we're rich too and probably richer than you so like she she bothers me and then um, I think there's this one, one girl's name's Kelly she's super pretty and I love that she's like a boss bitch but her boyfriend is toxic AF Andrew, like, I'm convinced he's either a sociopath or a narcissist because the way that he treats her, it's like, no, like, no, ma'am, like, you know, I know, like, you've had some bad relationships, but he is toxic, and everybody keeps trying to tell her that he's toxic but she's like no you should really see what he's really like he's actually a really loving person and he's willing to go to therapy with me and stuff it's like girl he is damaged goods like it's not just because he's latin and intense like he is a sociopath and he takes advantage of you for being vulnerable and not trusting a bit like he full-on uses you as a pushover because the way that he talks to you when he's quote unquote mad at you girl get out immediately like that, that that's not cool at all i really hope she ends up with kevin because kevin has like the biggest crush on her and they can be so cute together but she needs to get andrew out of the way like she needs to realize that he's toxic let that shit go then heal herself and then get with andrew or not, not Andrew, get with Kevin because Kevin seems like the real deal Holyfield and she needs someone who's really down to earth and genuine and likes her for her because I really think that Andrew is just with her because of the privileges of her having money because he's like an actor or something like that so of course having a girlfriend with money makes him look good so 
and you can only go so far with just being fine. Like, you know, if you if you're attractive, like that helps. But if you're attractive and an asshole, that will only get you so far. I do love Kane. I I think he's great. Like. I, I've, I've followed him on Instagram before. He seems like a ton of fun and just seeing him like really just be like, you know, he's one of those people that grew up wealthy and he knows he's wealthy and he knows the privileges of being wealthy, but then he also knows what it's like to be humble about it. Like he's like, yeah, I can do whatever I want whenever I want. Cause you know, my family pretty much set me up for life, but I don't owe people shit and I love that like you know or people don't have to respect me just because I got money like treat people how you want to be treated and we can all just have a good time with this money so I love that um Jamie is like Silicon Valley money she really hasn't had much of a storyline yet which kind of upsets me because she's actually from where I'm from which is the Bay Area I do uh, check out her YouTubes on occasion and I also like um, follow her on Instagram because you know she really is super into fashion and she really shows what like you know Gen Zers can do with high fashion without it being like annoying so I really hope that they give her more airtime because I really would want to see more of like who she is beyond what we see on Instagram and on YouTube where she's just serving these looks because she is serving the looks I will I I I will say that but as far as like a storyline with her she just basically just seems like she's just one of the people that's there like almost like um a friend of, of like a friend of a friend like they really haven't made her like a maid which maybe that's what she wanted. I don't know, but it just seems she just seems dry because they really haven't given her that much like airtime. Um, and uh, Anna, love her, love her. Like she takes no shit. Christine has beef with her because again she's nouveau riche, so she wasn't born with the money she married into money so she acts brand new and it's like oh yes we stay here we fly here we go we go here we vacation here look at this new like this that i bought like only the people who are like invited to you know shop here you know can have this and you know i wear head to toe designer all day every day and look at my nannies and all this stuff. like she acts very like brand new Rich. like she acts rich versus Anna who is wealthy she acts wealthy like she's like yeah I know I got money but I don't need to put it in your face all the time that I got money and that's what I appreciate appreciate about her like yeah she had you know there's a scene where she literally had like a personal shopper from Dior bring her like an entire collection to her house and then she just you know picked whatever she wanted and then she also told uh kevin to pick whatever he wanted and she was just like yep just put it on my bill uh enjoy your stuff you know no questions asked because she's wealthy and she just like enjoys you know living her best life knowing that you know she ain't gotta worry about money and she's like since i don't have to worry about money and i've never had to worry about money i'm just gonna live my life you only live once and just treat people how you want to be treated so yeah, I'm, I'm three episodes in. I'd love to know if you y'all are watching it. Again, it's Bling Empire on uh, late Netflix. Um, I only started watching it because people were talking about it on uh, Instagram. Like a few of the um, other like influencers I follow were talking about Bling Empire and like how they binged it and how it was good. Because I'm always looking for new stuff to watch because like right now I'm kind of like in a phase where nothing really excites me that I want to watch and I've just been re-watching like old stuff like I'm currently re-watching CSI from the beginning like who does that I guess it's because I'm secretly 80 I don't know but yeah like I do stuff like that so I'm trying to find like stuff that actually piques my interest that's like new that's on TV um the guy I'm, um, I'm seeing though he um got me onto this show it's it's kind of like it's kind of off humor 
so a lot of people might not find it funny, but I find it funny. It's this show called Letter Kenny, and it comes on Hulu. And he's actually rewatching it with me because he's like super into it, and he's already seen all nine seasons of it. So he's actually restarting it to watch it with me. And so far, I like I'm I think I'm almost done with season one, and I I find it hilarious. But again, like it's kind of that off humor that maybe like not a lot of people like mesh with. So you know. You can watch it if you want to, but it's okay. I would understand if you didn't get it because basically the premise is it's this um, small town in Ontario, Canada, where there's different groups of uh, people. Like there's these cliques, like there's the Hicks, there's the Skids, which are basically like the meth heads. And then <laughs> there's like the super duper like religious people and they all just kind of lived oh in the hockey players yeah so that there's like four groups i knew i was forgetting what so yeah they all kind of do their own thing but then you also see how they kind of interact with each other and how they like don't like each other but then they also realize that they kind of need each other to do certain things and so they kind of make peace but then they don't so but then it's like off humor about it so yeah check that out if you want to but uh, i find it funny but you know you might not so, yeah, if there's any other shows that you guys are into that you think I would like, some of the shows that I, I really rock with heavy, like that I absolutely loved was, I love shows like The Crown. Don't don't talk to me about Bridgerton, though. I tried it. It, it, it didn't. I, I, I just, I didn't see what the hype was about with Bridgerton, like, but I love The Crown. Uh, I love shows like The West Wing. Um... CSI, obviously, love me like some Law and Order. Uh, one of my favorite shows of, of all time was Mad Men. You know, like I really like dramas with great character development and the occasional plot twists. That's kind of like the shows that I enjoy, or you know, documentaries that have you know actual historical context. Like that's the kind of stuff that I like. So, if you want to recommend some shows? Like by all means. Um, I'm always looking for uh, something new because, you know, we're still trying to, you know, shelter in place as much as we can during this panorama. So I'm trying to stay home. And so I need I need stuff to watch. So I have I have Netflix. I have Hulu. I have Prime Video. Um, I think I have HBO Max, too. And then also Showtime. So any of the shows that like come on those like because I have one of those Amazon Fire Stick thingies um, any of the shows that come on on those like that you checked out that you think I, I would like like lets me know in the comments because I'm always wanting to find new shows and stuff um, one of my other guilty pleasures that I don't admit that I like to watch I am a fan of the real Housewives franchise however I'm only a fan to a certain extent so my favorite one to watch was because of Eric because of Erica Jane I loved Beverly Hills because I love me some pretty mess I love following her on Instagram her songs kind of slap with me like pretty mess is actually one of my favorite songs and I love to play in my car when I'm feeling like a baddie um, and I just love her vibe and her energy she's so pretty and she dresses her ass off I don't know if she's gonna be back because uh, you know she's going through her like messy ass divorce right now so I don't know if she gonna be back on the show next season but if she is I will still be watching and I also love Dorit because Dorit brings the looks like out of all the Housewives franchises Dorit is, bre is best dressed hands down I, I don't quite vibe with her personality at times because I don't understand like she's from Connecticut but then she has like a fake British accent but she dresses down and I'm here for the slay so you know I, I, I like her in that way. Um, I used to like Kyle because I liked her style and I liked, you know, her family. Like, you know, Mauricio was fine as hell, you know, and all that stuff. But now she's just like a mean girl. And I'm just kind of like, what happened to the old Kyle? Like, where did you go? Because this new Kyle is just a mean girl and she's dry. Like, you know. Like, did you really need, like, did you really depend on Lisa Vanderpump that bad to kind of, like, make you look good? 
because right now you are trash, like basura. So, you know, I, I really don't like, it's pretty much I just watch it for Erica and um, Dorit, because like, I don't even know who have these new uh, girls are. Um, I did love that uh, Garcelle uh, was on there this past season because finally there is a black woman on a a franchise that's not Atlanta. Like, I don't know what took them so long to do that. We can have that discussion another day, but I'm glad that they finally realized that having the kind of quasi-segregated uh, franchises was, was not a good look. Like, I, I don't like that because, you know, Atlanta is pretty much black women. Then, you know, all the other franchises are mostly white women, but then when you think about some of the cities, especially these major metropolitan areas where these some of these franchises are filmed, it's like, there's black people there. There's, you know, Hispanic people there. There's Asian people there. Like, why, why can't y'all, you know, find some for the show? Like, like, you know, WTF, like that, that bothers me. And that's one of the things that bothers me about reality TV. Like, that's another reason why I don't like, I don't rock with like The Bachelor and stuff because they do that same thing where it's like, uh, can we get like an interracial couple on here? Or, you know, like right now, I think The Bachelor is a, is a black guy, but then it's like, he like, he prefers, you know, he prefers white women. And it's just kind of like, if, you know, you don't want to date black girls, just say that. You know, but he kind of just like beats around the bush about it, and like almost like in the in the sense that he feels like people are gonna give him crap for picking a white girl or something like that. And it's just kind of like we don't care that you're a black guy on The Bachelor and you decide to choose a black woman, uh, choose a non-black woman as the person that you end up with. Like we don't care, but just don't bash black women along the way. Like that's all we ask. Just, you know, keep your mouth shut, keep keep our names out your mouth, and eat, drink, and be merry. Like, we don't care that you ended up, you know, with uh, Hannah over there. Like, just don't talk crap about us. So, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm here for interracial relationships. Like, but black men and white women are kind of a norm when you see interracial dating like whenever it's represented on tv it's pretty much black men and white women you rarely see a black woman in a white man full disclosure the person that i'm dating is white so you know i would love to see more of that on the tv but you know it's 2021 we're making baby steps as far as like strides but i'd like to see more of that and not just on reality but back to the Real Housewives, because I got off a little bit on this tangent. Um, yeah, um, I used to love New Jersey. Um, Teresa basically like made the show. Like when she wasn't on air, it was just kind of like, "Who are these women? You guys are dull." I do miss Caroline in a way though, because she was no BS, and I like that about her, and I love how much of a, a family person she was, how family oriented she was. Like, I miss that and seeing like uh, her kids, like, you know, seeing Albie, Christopher and Lauren, like I wonder what they're up to because we kind of watched them grow up while she was on the show. So I kind of wonder, you know, like what's Albie and Christopher doing? You know, does Lauren have babies yet? Cause you know, she's married now, you know, did Albie and Christopher finally get married or are they still mama's boys living you know, with their mama? I don't know. like. I just I, I just kind of want to know where they're at. So, yeah. That's kind of how I feel about Real Housewives. And Potomac, like, Potomac is just, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I love that it's another one with a, a full, mostly black, uh, black cast. Um, most of them are mixed and they're, you know, on the you know, fairer side, you know, but they're still black. However, like 
the way they be acting sometimes is so like like bougie and then they're not even that wealthy you know what I mean like Giselle is just tacky like she needs a stylist hire me sis um but um and then Robin her storyline is tired and she just signs on to whatever Giselle says which is sad that she doesn't have her own point of view on anything then Monique is the only one that's like actually wealthy and you know actually like you know has the beautiful family with you know the multiple homes and the nice cars and you know the beautiful children and her husband you know loves her her mother-in-law is a hot mess i don't know if i'll be able to, to put up with her i don't care how much money my husband got i don't know you know eventually you know i respectfully my mother-in-law would have to catch hands if she was talking to me like that because homie don't play that and then um Candace, I, I don't know where her major malfunction is, but let's just say she deserved to catch hands. Like Monique was not the one nor the two. We all know that she got a little hood in her. And Candace says something slick and the right circumstances presented itself where, you know, the alcohol was flowing. She said something slick and she got her ass beat. Freedom of speech does not mean freedom of consequences. Like, sorry, not sorry that you got your ass beat, girl. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. But, yeah. <sighs> um, I am almost at my destination. Yes, I know. It's, I feel like I've been driving for oodles of time. But I had to drive from my house in the Burbs to... Uh, into San Francisco and I just got into San Francisco like I just got off the freeway just now so and I'm almost at my first almost at my first stop and what did I say I was going to get oh yeah so I have to go to I have to go to Oakenfort maybe Aritzia I don't know and oh and Trader Joe's and forget the TJ's TJ's is important. So, I don't know if I want to go to Aritzia though, because then I would have to go to the mall. And if I go to the mall, then I would have to find parking. And parking, and I don't want to park near the mall because I know I'd have to park in a parking garage and then they charge you for, they charge you like $5 even if you only park for like 20 minutes. And that just don't sit right with me. Like, I'm. I'm selectively cheap. One of my, one of the bloggers I adore used that term, selectively cheap, and I was like, I like that because yes, there are some things like I I you know do you know love a good you know designer moment. I like you know nice things, but there are certain things where I'm just like, so that is how much? Nah, nah, we're not doing that. Like, <laughs> and so you know. Being in the Bay Area or being in any major city and having to pay for parking sometimes, I'm just like, you know what? Like, I would just love a good old parking meter where I could just pop some quarters in, give myself maybe 20 minutes because that's really all I need. Because when I go shopping, even pre-panorama, when I go shopping, I don't try on clothes. So I really just need to just go in there, you know, take my lap, see if you got something good. And then if I'm buying it, I'm buying it. If I'm not, I'm not. And then I just leave. So really, I don't need that much time. But yeah, I'll be in um, Hayes Valley. I'm going to this store. Hayes Valley is actually really, really cute. Um, it's like an, an older neighborhood in um, San Francisco that's gotten very gentrified. But some of my favorite places are down there. So like there's... Um, in Oak and Ford, this is actually the second location. One of them is in the mall where Aritzia is at. Um, then there's, you know, a few restaurants that I love that are down here. Uh, the Grove, which was one of my favorite eateries in San Francisco, used to actually have a location down here too, but they closed this one during the panorama. And now they only have the other two, 
which one is in uh, the design district, and then which is on the other side of town from where I'm at, and then the other one is um, in the Fillmore area, which also has great shopping, and it's another place that I like to go to, to another area of San Francisco where if I'm doing like boutique things that I like to shop at. Ooh, is this parking Hollywood? I will take it. Look at this. Street parking with a meter. Hey, love it. But any hoodle, we're here. So now I'm going to take you guys to run my few little errands because I actually already placed my order with Oak and Fort. I'm just picking it up. So we're going to go do that now. So I've got my mask. Here we go. Oh, these masks, this mask, um, I have it in eight colors. They come in packs of four and I bought two packs. Um, this mask is from Jonathan Simkai, if anybody asks. So I really like them because they fit really well and they're very like breathable and then they make like neutral tones. So I really like these masks. I have them in all the colors to like match my outfits, but like being the per like being the disorganized organized person that I am, like some of my homeboys are missing, and I'm trying to avoid buying another pack, but I might have to. So now we're here, so let's go shopping. Okay, so we are officially done running errands. I even picked up a smoothie from Jamba Juice. Mm. I love that they do um, online ordering with their app and then you can just go pick it up. It's like the best thing ever. So that's pretty much it. Um, now I'm gonna go back to my house, put away my groceries and do some other stuff. I think the power should be back on. I think it was flickering. It was flickering on and off when I left earlier. So maybe it's back on. So then I can pack orders for my shop. And then um, probably maybe make an actual lunch and clean up in my house, which is boring. So I'll spare you that. But um, and then rearrange. Um, sorry. And then arrange these roses that um, I bought from Trader Joe's to put into my vase when I get home. So yeah, so you ran errands with me today. I'm going to probably end the vlog here and hopefully I'll get better at this so that I'm not so annoying and it'll be fun. Okay, have a good one. Bye.